The science is clear. Any delay in concerted global climate action means missing a brief and rapidly closing window to secure a livable future. This report is a dire warning about the consequences of inaction. It shows that climate change is a grave and mounting threat to our well-being and a healthy planet. All life on Earth, from ecosystems to human civilization, is vulnerable to a changing climate. Scientific evidence now shows that the current human-caused global warming of 1.1 degrees Celsius is increasingly impacting nature and people's lives everywhere, despite efforts to adapt to the changing climate. More frequent and severe climate extreme events, such as heat waves over land and in the ocean, droughts and flooding, have caused widespread and pervasive impacts to ecosystems, people, cities and infrastructure, and limit the chances of a livable future for all. There is new knowledge that human-induced climate change caused these destructive impacts or makes them more likely. This report is important because I think it really underscores the fact that the scientific evidence is now unequivocal. It's clear that climate change is impacting on the well-being of human societies, but also on the well-being of our planet. This report really brings us a new message, though, that those two things are not separate, that there's a very intimate relationship between our well-being, the well-being of our planet, and the forces that are driving climate change and the resulting impacts and responses that we may have to that challenge. The extent and magnitude of climate change impacts are larger for each additional fraction of warming than estimated in previous assessments. So are the risks projected for the future. The impacts involve severe and widespread disruptions to nature and to society, reducing our ability to grow nutritious food or provide clean drinking water. The poorest communities are the ones that are strongest hit by climate change as they're least able to cope with the growing impacts. Our assessment indicates that there are between 3.3 and 3.6 billion people who live in such hotspots. These are spread across parts of Africa, South Asia, South and Central America, small islands and the Arctic. Climate change acts like a stress multiplier in these regions where people have limited access to clean drinking water, to sanitation, to health facilities or education. The livelihoods of people are also strongly dependent on climate sensitive activities such as farming and fishing. They have limited access to funding, limited accountability from governments and limited trust therefore in governments. Climate impacts are also felt differentially by men and women as they have different roles and responsibilities in society. This report shows that climate change is impacting every ecosystem across the globe, from high mountain ecosystems to the deep ocean, from uh, tropical coral reefs all the way to Arctic ice-driven ecosystems. We see the, the fingerprint of climate change across all of these systems. One of the other things that the report really shows is that extreme events are increasing and their effects are rapidly changing ecosystems across the globe. So marine heat waves, heat waves on land, storm events, these are driving changes to the ecosystems and species that we rely on. This is pushing species towards polar regions, it's pushing species to, to higher, cooler altitudes or down into the deeper, cool waters. And because of that, it has cascading impacts across uh, ecosystems, but also people's livelihoods and societies that depend on the services that these ecosystems provide. And as we approach the limits of what species and ecosystems can tolerate, we risk crossing what we call tipping points, these critical places in uh, the system where returning to previous conditions where recovery is less possible. Climate change impacts are magnified in cities where more than half of the world's population lives today. Heat waves amplify urban heat islands and air pollution in cities 
that affect people's health. Critical infrastructure within settlements, such as transportation, water, sanitation, and energy systems have been compromised by extreme weather events. Cities and settlements by the sea are specifically impacted by climate hazards. They are at the front line of climate change, being directly exposed to interacting climate and non-climate coastal hazards, such as sea level rise and destruction of local ecosystems that previously protected people living along the coast. Multiple climate hazards are also occurring simultaneously, with often cascading impacts. These impacts are becoming increasingly complex and challenging to manage. How these will affect nature and people depends on the speed and level of warming and how we adapt. The Working Group 2 report of the IPCC shows that the impact of climate change is worsened by destruction of habitats, also a sustainable use of natural resources, deforestation, and growing urbanization and population growth trends. The report also found that um, for the African region, increasing urbanization is an important compounding factor for climate change. For the coastal areas of Africa, especially the low-lying coastal areas, population is increasing rapidly because of the economic opportunities that the coastal environment presents. Many people moving into the coastal areas live in informal settlements, marginal areas and high-risk areas. And this has implications because the threats of climate change is compounded and the ecosystems and the people that rely on them are affected. El reporte muestra que tenemos acciones de adaptación importantes en diferentes partes del planeta, pero los avances no son similares en diferentes regiones y de hecho no estamos haciendo suficientes esfuerzos para alcanzar los niveles de adaptación necesitados por los niveles actuales de calentamiento. Eso resulta en vacíos de adaptación importantes, especialmente en regiones de bajos ingresos como mi propio país, Guatemala, donde vemos barreras importantes que vienen no solamente de aspectos financieros, sino también de aspectos institucionales. La buena noticia es que sí tenemos acciones de adaptación que podemos hacer para reducir nuestros niveles de vulnerabilidad, pero la efectividad de estas acciones dependerá de los niveles de calentamiento. Por lo tanto, tenemos que tener tanto adaptación como mitigación trabajando mano a mano. We also have evidence of what's called maladaptation. These are adaptation actions that result in unintended consequences. For example, coastal ecosystems that are destroyed through the construction of dikes and seawalls, or climate-related risks that are transferred to other regions or groups in society. Even greenhouse gas emissions can be increased through maladaptation. Our report shows that indigenous peoples, ethnic minorities and disadvantaged groups, such as low-income households and those living in informal settlements, are some of the most affected by maladaptation. Unfortunately, this reinforces and entrenches already existing inequalities. The report shows that nature offers significant yet untapped potential to reduce climate risks, to deal with the causes of climate change and to improve people's lives and livelihoods. However, nature needs space and protection to be able to provide those services. However, investing in nature and cities alone isn't enough. To secure a healthy, livable planet for everyone, we need to transform our way of life fundamentally. Taking action now gives us the best chance of success. It emphasizes the urgency of immediate and more ambitious action to address climate risks. Half measures are no longer an option.